Hey, the revolution is televised. Today, I am with two of the most talked about leaders in the watch industry right now. Mr. Beaver, you do not need any introduction, but I'm going to give you an introduction anyway. You found great success with Zenith, Tech Hoyer, Hublot. You turned around Omega, you tripled its profits, its turnover. You turn around Blancpain, you built it from scratch. It's so incredible. The only thing I've turned around is my car when I see a police roadblock. I need to ask you, what is the most memorable moment, if you could pick one of your colourful, challenging career? What comes to my mind straight away, Yes. the most memorable moment was the moment I decided with Pierre that I will interrupt my retirement because I cannot retire from my passion and that I would launch our own brand together. That was, for me, the biggest moment in my professional life. That's amazing. You shocked the world when you announced your retirement, and now you shocked everyone when you're back again. And I understand that you are advisor to the board of Kanisi, of, of, of Nokan. No yes. Of no Khan. But you said no, because... That's a... I don't want any conflict of interest, as I have my own brand. Mm -hmm. I thought it's not probably right to be uh, on the board of another brand, on the board of Norka, and I said to Norka, I like you, I like your method, I like your concept, and I would love to advise you. So why don't you name me advisor of the board? And uh, they agreed, and I take part on the board, and I give my opinions, I give my advice to the board. And you have brought along your son Pierre to Singapore? and you are building a fantastic new brand with him. I want to know, Pierre, I understand that you were a watch expert with Philips Auctions before this. Are you the youngest child? I'm the youngest. You're the youngest. I see in interviews that people don't really get to know who is the real uh, Pierre Beaver, besides you are up and coming and you're building a unique brand with your father. Uh, I see that you're also very stylish in the interviews that they photograph with you. You've got nice glasses, got nice hairstyles. Thank you. Uh, maybe just a little bit for the for the viewers of Revolution. Uh, what do you like? Maybe in terms of like food, music. Who do you look up to? When you are not creating your own brand of watches, what, what? How do you spend your time? I think I'm pretty simple. I like to hang around with my friends. I like to play football. Uh, I like nice cars. I like to drive around. I like to travel. Spend time in in the nature. I like. I like all types of music, I like arts, um, pretty diverse, not very original, nothing too particular. No, pretty cool. I like to be chill and, and just hang around with the people I love. Nice. Um, so today, right, I won't be asking the questions, but I've actually asked the Revolution followers, the Revolution viewers, what they would like to ask you guys. So if I could grab a few couple of questions off of Instagram, mm -hmm. first one is, what have you guys discovered since starting your own brand? I have learned since starting that to start a brand from scratch is much more difficult <laughs> than I ever thought. Uh, I remember I, I, I developed Blancpain from scratch yes. in 1981. But in 1981, the situation was much easier than the situation now. In, in the sense that uh, in the watch industry, we had much less competition in 1981. Mm. Today, you have competition from every, everywhere. <laughs> every country. Even from every country, <laughs> you know. So I discovered, my goodness, what have we done? <laughs> it will be a very difficult, it will not be an easy job. But that doesn't, disc that, 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 it doesn't matter. Uh, it gives me even more will, but that's the di that's what I discovered uh, the difficulty of today. Okay, and UPA for you? Well, I've discovered the same, but without the experience that my father had. Uh, okay, uh, I, for me, it's all yeah. very new and it's uh, very challenging. But it's mm -hmm. it's incredibly interesting and it's in incredibly gratifying as well. Uh, we get to learn m a lot about uh, the industry we love. Mm -hmm. uh, we get to learn a lot about the, the products we love as well. In addition to that, I would say that I, I, I really enjoy discovering my father from another mm -hmm. perspective, which is working with him, uh, seeing how he works, the mm -hmm. person he is at the office, how he takes his decision, how mm -hmm. he doubts, how he includes us in the decision processes. And altogether, it's a really fun adventure. Actually, this brings 
me to my next question. This is sent from um, Anna Sophia on Instagram. What is the most exciting part of the watch brand creation process? What is exciting is the fact today many watches are bought by many people not anymore to tell you what time it is. We could sell a watch with that even doesn't work. And sometimes I surprise my wife and I say, but your watch is not working. And she says, that doesn't matter. <laughs> the watch is beautiful. That's all I need. Yeah. I need beauty. Mm. I need elegancy. Mm. I need style. If the watch works or not, it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> and I think this is very surprising. <laughs> it's something I, 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 I didn't know it would, uh, it would happen. And today, that's the fact. Many people are buying the watch for many other reasons. It's art. Because it's art, it's exclusive, yes. it is status. Yes. We cannot just focus on, the art, on making yeah. watches that are, and on time, uh, precision, chronometer, <laughs> certificate, etc. That is still, it plays a certain role. Yes. But it's not anymore the essential. Mm. That's my surprise, I would say. With that said, are you going to send your watch for a chronometer certification? Or? Yes, that is. <laughs> now, I'm, I have preached something, but I still do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go a bit deeper into that later on because the watch you described to me, the, the first ever JCD Beaver watch, flips everything on its head, right, in that sense. Maybe, but first, Pierre, uh, what's the best part of the job for you? Well, what, what I'm really passionate about is going to meet the suppliers, uh, working with our engineers mm -hmm. in the office, uh, with our watchmakers, to understand more about the product, to understand how it's made, understand yeah. the technical aspects yeah. of, of watchmaking, mm -hmm. uh, the, the challenges, uh, the, way, the way everything works. It's super interesting and it's really important, especially in, in the niche we're trying to target, to have a good understanding of our product and to be able to communicate on what makes it special and unique. What have you learned from working with your dad? And likewise for you also, what, what have you realized from working with a much younger person, your son? The first thing that comes to mind is that uh, how often he's right. Mm. Uh, and you can really feel his experience. Mm. Um, I try to challenge him because I'm in a position where as his son, I'm able to say things that he doesn't necessarily want to hear. So that's, uh, that's interesting. And we have lots of debates. We often discuss various mm. subjects uh, around our brand and around the watch industry yeah. and it's quite interesting to see how his experience pays off and how many times he's right um, and something else is that he's a great leader a great leader because he's somebody that uh, values his team values yeah. the people around him and he's somebody that brings not only himself but the whole team up together mm. so we're all able to learn to grow and to become better yeah, I, I understand you brought your whole Blanc Pond team on holiday with you once. Yeah. Yes, 1989. We brought more than 100, 137 or 117 people for one week to uh, Italy, to Napoli, to Pestos, to Capri, yeah. uh, and, to, and to Pompeii. And we traveled one week, Monday till Friday, uh, till Saturday, all together, the whole team. But the most beautiful and the most remarkable souvenir I have from this uh, trip is that when I came back to the office on Monday, I saw a wonderful letter of signed by everybody who was on the trip saying, Mr. Beaver, thank you, but we want to work five Sundays <laughs> to recoup the five days where we had zero production because you brought us to Italy. Yeah. But that's a skill of a leader to be able to bring everyone up and motivate everyone. And I've, I've watched many of your interviews and you talk a lot about how like, every day you, is something new when you work with your son. You are seeing the, eye, the world through the lenses of a, a younger man. Yes. What else have you learned if you could elaborate a little bit for the viewers? <laughs> You know, uh, uh, I, because I am old, I mean old, it depends. 
my heart is not old. Mm. My mentality is not old. My age is maybe old. As I am born in 1949, I want to work with people that are born in 1999. Mm. Because what do I learn from people who are my age? They might have the same opinion, but so what? What I learned from Pierre is that I learned their new mentality. He is the future. And to learn how will the future be, what will the future say, what will the future feel, what will be the taste of the future. But that's so interesting. And who better than the future can tell you how the future will look? Now, age, an aged man, can also eventually tell you how the future will be, but he is not the future. And I will trust more my son than any other that is on my age. And I think this brings to a nice mix of my father with a huge experience, mm. lots of years in working in the watch industry, myself with close to no experience at all. And it's the perfect balance because he brings lots of stability, yes. of, con of confidence, of knowledge. Yeah. And I'm able, with, my, with the amount of lack of experience, mm. uh, to challenge his thoughts, his opinions, to bring new and fresh ideas mm. that are not polluted by any, uh, any formatting that yeah. I could have yeah. Yeah. had uh, working and having experience. So it's the perfect combination between a lot of experience and a lot of non-experience. No, I, I totally get you. Uh, the wisdom of sound decision making with a new perspective of the, of the new world. Exactly. And with this combination, we must answer that question, which is what does the new JC Beaver watch look like? I've, I've seen interviews where you guys have hinted that you want to release a minute repeater. Mm -hmm. I've seen interviews that you guys have hinted that you want to do finishing where components cannot be seen. Uh, how much can you reveal on camera right now to the revolution audience? So I, I would say that the watch, we really want to keep it confidential until it's ready mm -hmm. because that's our spirit of this project, of this brand, is focusing on quality products, high-end products, mm -hmm. true luxury. And uh, we feel as, a, as long as it's not ready to be launched and presented publicly, as long as we still have details to get done better. We don't want to announce anything. We want to show it when it's reached a certain level where we are happy with it. Um, but it's in many ways very traditional. Uh, we try to make a good mix between traditional shapes, so it's a round watch. Mm -hmm. So I, I already give you an info that not everybody has, so yes, it's a round watch. Um, but it has some features that rem could remind you of vintage inspired pieces mm -hmm. with that have been refreshed to today's trends and tastes. It's a really good mix. I think it's a watch that really fits in today's era. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I've just come back from Japan. Uh, Japanese people are always very trendy. When you walk into the streets of Shibuya or Shinjuku yep. or even Ginza, you can yes. see uh, what are the next trends, how mm -hmm. the people dress. And I think that with what I saw, uh, I'm confident we made a design that's very much in, in today's world and in today's temporality. So I can't wait to I, I, for I the market mention, to see it. I would mention the design neoclassic. It means it, it has the two trends. Yes. Classic on one side, but it's not the repetition of the past because it has also elements of the future. Mm -hmm. And that creates a certain tension when you have two trends. One is classic, the other one is innovation, is future, and that creates a certain tension. And design needs a tension. A design cannot be flat. A design cannot be just a copy or an inspiration of yesterday. Yeah. So we have really succeeded in making the two in one, mm. and I call it neoclassic. And the tension, yeah. the tension um, takes place in, in many different regards, whether it's the difference between shapes that are rounded and then more straight and angular yeah. um, components. Uh, there's a tension between the finishing, between mm. mirror polished and mm. satin finished. Yes. Uh, there's a tension between uh, concave 
uh, well, I don't know how to explain convex, uh, yeah. convex and concave. Mm. There's really, we try to, it's a bit of a yin and yang piece where we try to mix together all the different uh, okay. worlds to create this tension. Are there any other features of the watch you, you can reveal, like the dial or... The so dials or are the stone, stone dials. dials. Okay. Because the stone dial is always different. Yeah, it's be every piece is unique. two times the same. Yeah. So it's more or less unique pieces mm -hmm. and you have stone dials. So something that's really important for us and also explains the choice to go for stone dials is that we want, although we want to respect the tradition of watchmaking mm -hmm. and high-end watchmaking, it's important for us to also be modern, also live in today's world, yeah. uh, to use new materials mm. or new process or new techniques. Altogether, we want, we want to uh, incorporate innovation within our product, mm -hmm. but we want it to be done according to our values. Okay. Uh, values which are, for instance, I'm talking case material. Yeah. Uh, we're looking to explore new materials, but we'll only take one if mm -hmm. it can be decorated, polished, or uh, sandblasted, or or grainé, or or satin finished. Uh, we want materials that we can repair. Mm -hmm. That means if you have a dent on your gold watch, it's very easy. On composite yes. materials, you have to throw them away. Yeah. Uh, and that have this noble feeling. And the same goes with the dials. And we thought that with our dial design, a stone dial would be very interesting mm. and very innovative to find solutions to, to making it the way we look, that we want it to look, because it's slightly domed. Mm. It has a, a very sharp apertures. And so this was a choice where we thought we might bring <coughs> innovation within mm. stone dials. Uh, if I could squeeze just one question about the watch. Uh, how many references, how many variants we can expect? And Secret. <laughs> Limited, how many? No, but there will be basically two materials, gold and titanium. And how many of them are you thinking of making? We can't really say today because it's really hard to, okay. to, to make them, to find okay. the, 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 the watchmakers yeah. and the availability and the suppliers. Mm. So we, ha we don't really have a cap of number of watches we're going to make. We don't have a minimum. We're just trying to produce, mm. keep our quality standards high and go quality according watch. to the sales. Okay. So now you're getting us really excited about this upcoming watch. Uh, from Martin Penner on Instagram, when might you be releasing this watch? March 2023, March. towards the end of the month. Uh, so. Okay, so a certain watch fair is happening around that time. Yeah. Around that time. Wonder. Yeah. <laughs> We're not participating, but uh, we are trying to release the watch uh, in that time period. But it will be elsewhere from the fair. Exactly. Okay. Oh, it will be Geneva in the hotel, <laughs> in the full season, like usual. We oh. were there last year. Okay, a uh, question from Watch Me Tipo <laughs> is direct to the point. How do you plan to manage your allocations? So. We're Let's we, first we get have the orders in. <laughs> first of all, and then uh, we've already said it, but we are going back to a very traditional mm -hmm. uh, distribution policy within uh, this project, which is to uh, only go through retailers. Mm -hmm. um, this is a choice motivated by the fact that these retailers have helped, uh, have built my father's career, career throughout the year. It's also a wish to recognize we are not retailers, we're not in the business of retail, mm -hmm. we're in the business of making watches. Mm -hmm. And we strongly believe that each company should yeah. stick to their knowledge and yeah. what we know how to do. Yes. You know, retailers have always have made watchmaking what watchmaking is. Without the retailers, the, the watch industry would not look like it, what it looks like today. They okay. know their job, they know their clients, okay. they know how to handle it. And the only thing is we need to find retailers that have a very strong understanding of our product, mm -hmm. of independent watchmaking, and that can allocate the product to people that understand, mm. uh, that see the watches as for what they are. Yeah. In March, we'll also have a list of our selected retailers mm. that cover most regions mm. of the world, uh, not necessarily in every country, but people will be able to have relays in, in every continent at least, and they can Okay. They can get go there if they're interested and create a relationship or if they have an existing relationship with, with the retailers. In terms of allocation, well, hopefully, if it's hard to get one, we'll be very happy. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, unfortunately for us, we'll be able to get one very easily. Okay. Uh, we'll see. Only time can tell.
uh, maybe last question is, can my boss Wei get an allocation ahead of time with you guys? Weiko is an old friend. Uh, your magazine is uh, also an old connaissance yeah. of, of me. I think we should consider this <laughs> okay. and confirm this uh, once we have all Closer the information. The yeah. uh, okay. and, and, and luckily, it, it seems that we'll have a retailer in Singapore, mm. a retailer that might have good connections with Wei. <laughs> so yes. yeah. we can always try and help, but uh, we, can't f we can't force our retailer's hand. So oh, I think sure. you'll have to, uh, to deal with the, the we'll our retailer here in Singapore. Rub the retailer up the right way. Exactly. Okay. Um, thanks guys for your time, Thank Mr. You. Beaver, Pierre, uh, as always a pleasure. This has been uh, Between Two, Be Beside One Fern, uh, Revolution TV, with the great Jean-Claude Beaver and Pierre Beaver. And we look forward to their brand launching in March 2023.